wanted to be out supporting a Haringey Green Party. They've got an absolutely spectacular stall here, uh, one of the most impressive I've seen. Uh, and they've got some really huge issues here that I'm finding talking to people of Haringey are making real impact. Air pollution, of course, particularly given London's recent incidents of extreme air pollution. We're standing beside a road where I hate to think what the nitrogen dioxide levels are. Uh, also talking about the issue of waste and pink and whey. Uh, and also we're very much today here it's focusing on the bedroom tax and the whole impact of the benefit cuts. Well, what we're doing here today is that obviously out with Haringey Green Party, Natalie Bennett party leaders coming along and myself as European Parliament to try and pull together some of the strands of the local and the European elections and say to people that, you know, there is space for an, this, this fresh voice, this green voice, that's not looking at business as usual, it's actually looking at trying to create something a bit more different, a bit, a bit grounded. No, I mean, it's, I'm going to later this afternoon to a protest against the bedroom tax and the, lots of people there talking about how they've been impacted by it and it's like, you know, there's so many, you know, oh, the government's own figures, 75% of people have disabilities. Well, that's the point that I'd like to think about. Yeah. I used to work for years in the local I don't, I know. I've been very impressed by the whole issue, the campaign against Pink and Way, and that's something that's close to my heart because I also live in Camden, so it's also a local issue for me. And you know, we absolutely must not go in the direction of Pink and Way. What we need to do is reduce, recycle, uh, and not go towards this kind of waste disposal methods. What kind of Green Party, Haringey Green Party messages are going down well? Pollution, I think, is going well. It's, uh... Our latest leaflet. Uh, Our latest leaflet, which was designed and written before this dreadful yeah. pollution problem this week in London. That um, talks about the, and shows a picture of the pollution, <coughs> the pollution in London uh, and the degree of uh, you know, particulates and all the rest of it that we're breathing in. Our health and safety and getting worse. And if we're not careful to protect the regulation of our health and safety, uh, then uh, It'll just get worse and worse, and, and none of the big parties are really fighting hard at all about this. And, and it also raises the issue of why Brussels and our votes for MEPs are so important because it's Brussels that will make the real difference on things like pollution. The pollution we've been suffering in London this week, uh, Harrogate Council can do its bit, but it's not going to affect what we've been suffering from in London this week. That's Brussels. And I think. Another issue is maybe talking about austerity because some people, economics always comes up and when you say, well it doesn't have to be like this, there doesn't have to be austerity because that's all a bit of a con, it gets into a discussion which people are not having elsewhere. Uh, we're the only people who are saying uh, austerity actually is uh, not what it's all about. Austerity is about making the rich richer uh, and the mainstream parties all seem signed up to it. So. That's a kind of new discussion we're trying to have with people because they're not hearing it elsewhere in the BBC or anything like that. Like we're out today with our petition against the bedroom tax. None of the other parties are. They're not against it. And uh, we're the only party that's doing that. And several government ministers have found themselves in instances of meeting bullies with clear folders. <laughs> no, yes. and that's brilliant for us. But I just think, you know, I don't yeah. think it's fair to no, people. Yeah, no, no. Well, Politicians. Yeah. I'm sorry. That's but right. It's fair I, game. My, my, my. Absolutely fair game. <laughs> yeah, no, so I, I think bedroom tax petition is quite good. <laughs> I think you know, getting even a small number of green councillors elected, if you look at large swathes of London, we're at a real risk that what we might see is one party states. Labour uh, dominating all of the council, or very nearly all of the council, and having a critical green voice in there asking questions, scrutinising, is going to be terribly important to see that our councils are held to account. Well, also, of course, on May 22, we've got the European ballot, and it's terribly important. Jean Lambert, our London's Green MEP, is here today, and we, you know, we need to get Jean back, and who knows, maybe also elect Caroline Allen from Islington in the number two slot, uh, because what we can have in the Green Parliament, in the Green Voice in the part in the uh, uh, European Parliament. Greens are the fourth largest group in the European Parliament. Many people may not know that the Tories are actually part of the uh, fifth largest group. And we can really make a real difference on issues from fracking uh, to fishing to a whole to uh, air pollution, a whole range of issues that affect people's lives in Britain. Having Green Councillors elected is is really important. And yes, it's part of that synergy between you know the Greens at the local level, Greens at the, the London level, members of the London Assembly. You, you need that that sort of that connection back and forwards because you know it's not as if what you do in the European Parliament is totally divorced from people's lives back in Harringay. And so a lot of the, the things that we need to be hearing about what would make a difference come from the local level. And having local councillors there that are also looking at issues.
is around the quality of housing, the amount of housing, the cost of it, um, the issue about roads, the, the pollution on them, the level of traffic, the, the green space that kids are actually free and able to play in. All of that is really important at the local level and it has implications globally. It may seem odd, but it does. So local councillors, green local councillors are really, really important. I think the excitement is building and part of that is because we've seen some of the stale arguments in or out of the European Union which are still very much talking about, you know, it's business. It's not so much about values about climate change, about the, you know, the issues around human rights, the UK's role in the world. The, the economic crisis is still ongoing. You would almost not know that from some of the debate, whereas for the Greens, this whole way in which we actually pull together reform of the economic sort of side of things, pulling back banking, financial sector so that it works for people, and trying to pull that together with the social dimension, absolutely crucial that those two things go together. And one of the things we haven't been hearing in the debate so far is where's social Europe? And how does social Europe fit also with environmental Europe? Something different. Well, I think it's been it's been great. Uh, it's been uh, there's an awful lot of people out on a good, mainly sunny day, uh, and uh, we've had a very visible presence, uh, as you can maybe see. Uh, and I think even if one in one in five stop for a conversation, and uh, one in three take a leaflet, uh, we've got to hundreds of people. We've actually contacted yeah. hundreds of people, yeah. and some of them already know us, but many of them don't. Um, I, I've got a slightly different problem to you in that I lived in this area for 33 years so I keep bumping into people I know who want to talk about anything other than the Green Party so I feel some of my time has been wasted for the Green Party though it's nice seeing old friends. Well, I'm really delighted to see just how many people I'm getting saying yes I'm voting Green or oh I'm really thinking about voting Green and we're finding that with a really broad range of people. Uh, how, how do people respond when you do get on to the Green Party message? I think very positively. I think most people are feeling so demoralised and disillusioned with what I call the grey parties, the much of a muchness parties. People are feeling cynical about politicians and I think finally they are beginning to see the Green Party for what it is, a different party. We're not a whipped party, we're a very democratic party, and we're not a, a, a single issue environmentalist party, as I and many others thought for so long. We have excellent policies on everything from education to economics and, and you know, we're about social justice and fairness. Um, I think the visibility is really important because quite a lot of people say, oh, the Green Party, or, oh, yes, sir. Uh, we know, they know something about us, but not too much, yeah? And they don't realise we might be standing 56 candidates in the local election, and we've got a Euro MEP. So it's just to remind people, we, you know, we are actually in a position of greater strength than you might have thought, yeah? Oh, absolutely. Yeah? That's me. Ah. My name is Lucy Craig, and I'm canvassing on behalf of the Green Party. I always and this Green. is our oh, Green Party true. leader, Natalie Dunham. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. We are very much hoping that this will be historic for us this year. Well, it may. Green Party. We, we do. Uh, you know, let's, let's, let's rein line up the three candidates with uh, Lucy Crowley in the first place. There you go. Good. Uh, on May 22, vote green for the common vote. It's really important that people vote. It's important that people vote green in both the local elections and the European elections on May the 22nd.